Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Mesa. Today we got a fun and exciting random Friday Halloween special for you today because we're going to be taking a look at Death Crimson Ox. Now the original Death Crimson on the Sega Saturn is definitely one of the worst games ever made for any console ever. And while Death Crimson Ox is not anything special, it is hilarious, it's unique, it is horror themed, and this is basically the only way I can think about how to talk about this game. This is basically House of the Dead if House of the Dead was 20% finished and they shipped it. But before we get too far involved, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. But without any further ado, let's talk about the horrors that is Death Crimson Ox, or OX, I'm never quite sure. It is a light gun game, and compared to the original, this thing is night and day better than that game. But compared to pretty much every other light gun game of its era, this game just has an unevenness that makes it very confusing. It is horror themed and there is fun to be had, you just kind of look around the corner to find that fun. And it's really interesting because the developer of this E. Cold or E. Cold A software made Melty Blood, which is an absolutely fun 2D sprite based fighting game. When they went to the light gun genre, it just didn't work as well, but I love that this dude just Kool-Aid mans right through the wall. The theming on this game is very strange. We have robots, we have zombies, we have skeletons, we have different horror bugs. It's basically some sort of cybernetic ghost situation going on with some zombies thrown in. Because obviously we have this giant dude here with this hand cannon just shooting at us, but then we get these skeletons that come out and just walk towards the camera. Almost seems like it might be from a stock model library, but it does seem to only ever appear in this game. What those skeletons do later is absolutely hilarious. Now mechanically, this is a sound game. The shooting works, the aiming is fine, you can play the game and you can either get better at it or worse at it, it's not going to fight you. Compared to that, the original Death Crimson, that game would fight you on the controls all day long, it just did not matter. Now from a gameplay perspective, you can get different weapons, you can get different score ups, but the name of the game, like any light gun game, is just to shoot something, and I love that model there, his face just kind of dripping down and gore like it melted, it is a good look. But the models in-game, their facial expressions, their lack of any lip movement for any sort of dialogue, this is a budget game. But it's a budget game that came out on both the Sega Naomi, how I'm playing it here, as well as the Dreamcast. And it actually came out basically after Sega had discontinued the Dreamcast lifespan. So this is a very late release. Now, if this doesn't remind you of some of the bosses from the House of the Dead, then you've never played that game before, because there definitely seems to be some heavy inspiration taken from that series. But honestly, if you're going to borrow, you may as well borrow from the best. But you'll see here as we finish this stage, the models just kind of move, and then he basically T-poses in the background. That's not really a bug, that's just how this game functions. And that's what's so fun about it. It's a horror light gun shooter that basically feels like it's held together with duct tapes and prayers, but it does work, and you can have a friend over, you can do two-player, and you can have an absolute blast with this game. It's like the mystery science theater of the light gun genre on the Dreamcast and Naomi. And that means even if it's bad, it is good. And that's why I've always wanted to talk about this game. Because obviously we're doing an entire House of the Dead retrospective. I thought it would be fun to look at the other side of the coin. And I will say sometimes enemies just hide. But you'll see that they couldn't actually build transitions from one area to the other. The screen will fade to black, it'll fade to white. It's so weird. And these zombies here, I just love their facial expression. It feels like they're phoning it in. They're one day away from retirement. And they just don't want to be doing this anymore. It's a real Danny Glover and Lethal Weapon situation in my opinion. And unfortunately there should really be a Lethal Weapon like in game as well. Leave me a comment down below the one game you want to exist that just never did. Because for me, Lethal Weapon the arcade game is a game that I think they just should have absolutely made. But back to Death Crimson Ox, because why am I talking about Lethal Weapon? It is just such an absurdly strange game. We have these butterflies with eyes on them, or at least what I think are butterflies, and if you shoot all of them you get a point bonus. They're not going to attack you, they're not actually an enemy in the game, it's like a little round of point blank in between the actual monsters. Or these giant fat aliens here with a dream cast logo on their chest it is just absurd and that's why this game does work you're never quite sure what you're going to see next the visuals are uneven the gameplay is strange but you always want to know what's around the corner but again these fade to blacks or just the inability to get from one screen to the other is a very weird design choice it's like the developer said we don't want to spend any energy on any area where we can't put a monster so just fade it to black or flash it to white and go from there and I will say the soundtrack to this game, it's definitely a soundtrack. It's right in the C tier, but I want to give you guys a chance to listen. But don't go too far because i got a lot more weirdness to show you. But enjoy this music because it is intriguing.
I swear some of those sound effects are borrowed from the House of the Dead, but I can't be 100% sure of it. They sound so familiar, but maybe they're pitched up or down. Leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think. But I love that we basically just get this metallic beetle rolling around because this metallic look was something that the Dreamcast and Naomi could do. And it seems like the artist at the development studio, Ecole, loved using it because it does show up later in the game. But honestly, it's just so funny. This game has cyborgs, it has skeletons, it's got zombies, it's got beetles. The character design is all over the place. Now, I'm not saying the character designs don't look good outside of these models. It's just such a strange vibe, and I love these stage clear screen as well. It comes up as this rainbow, which was a holdover from the original game. But as we move further in, the levels really don't have any continuity or context. It just seems like they were trying to go for, you know, the warehouse, the factory, the science lab, the haunted mansion. But here are those skeletons again. They are absolutely my favorite part of the game. Not just how they look, but how they attack, and you will see that shortly, a wet one hit me. But it's just so funny, we go from shooting cyborgs and all of those metallic beetles to just straight up skeletons in an office space. But come around the corner here, and if you let a skeleton hit you, that is right, it is a kung fu kick. It's a kung fu skeleton in a game with cyborg ninjas. Also sounds like something the Aqua Teen Hunger Force would have done in just their zaniness. We get more cutscene here. I have no idea what's going on with this story. I know this game is available in English, but it's just more fun to me not knowing what happens. And tell me down below, did you play this in arcades back in the day? Did you own it on Dreamcast? I do have an original Dreamcast copy, but I just wanted to play Naomi so I had infinite credits so it was easier to get further into the game. But you'll see here again, I'm not even sure what these enemies are. They don't have texture on them. They're just metallic and they're throwing these knives at me. But it's basically indecipherable as to what I'm actually shooting. Is it a zombie in a cyborg outfit? Is it a cyborg that's working with a zombie? I just have absolutely no idea. And the boss designs are absolutely classic as well. This is just one of the funniest boss fights in the game. And you will see very shortly as to why that is. But I love that it basically puts you at the stairs. And then it shows you this entire camera pan up. The game is either in a rush to get from one scene to the other. Or is in no hurry whatsoever. And really gives you that drag out transition. But you will see here she flexes her torso back, pulls her hips in, and shoots lightning out of somewhere. It is just definitely intentional and you know where that lightning is coming from. But she has the same kung fu kick as the skeleton, so it seems like some of the animations were borrowed between different bosses and characters. The death animation just falls flat on her face, and then her characters are just standing here again motionless doing nothing. But that's fine, it is a budget title. This was not something like The House of the Dead 2 with Sega's financial backing behind it. But as we get to this hangar here, again, all of the character designs are just so much fun, especially this boss character. It's like if the Terminator from Terminator 2 had his entire face melted off of him, but also had some sort of organic zombie matter underneath. It's a look, it's a vibe, but I'm 100% there for it. And that's the thing about this game. Is it good? Well, not really. Is it fun? Absolutely. Is it great for the Halloween season? 100%. And I love that we just jump in this plane after being in an airplane hangar. We get a new character that basically shows up just to fly the plane and is going to disappear. And this cutscene here, I just love that nothing really moves. They made so much out of so little. You just see him standing in front of you. How did the plane get out of the hangar? How did he not attack us? We're never going to find out because we just jumped to the desert with basically no reasoning whatsoever. And that's why this is fun. It's exactly like watching a B-movie, a B-horror movie, where the plot doesn't make any sense. There's massive plot holes, but because of all the fun you see on the screen, you're willing to forgive it a lot. And I will say, once we get to this area of the game, it becomes increasingly difficult. It wants as many credits out of you as it possibly can get. But I'm going to give you one more taste of the soundtrack, because I do kind of like it in this level. Maybe 20 seconds or so, and I'll come back and show you one of the funniest moments in the game. But enjoy. I just love that wind sound effect. It is so much louder than the rest of the music and doesn't really sound like wind so much as it sounds like the audio channel is clipping out. But as we get into this secret area here, Area 77, it is just basically like the House of the Dead, except if the House of the Dead released as an alpha version where it was like 20 to 25% finished. I'm not dragging on this game, I'm just telling you the truth. 
It is ugly, it is weird, the story makes no sense, and you can definitely tell it was done on a budget. What I am here to say is you've probably played so many horror games for Halloween, and just in general, you probably haven't played Death Crimson Ox, and that's why you owe it to yourself to do so. You need to experience this game. It is so much fun while it is so bad at the same time, and that's some of the best entertainment you can have. That's why you see these cult classic movies that are not that good, but they are so much fun to watch. The midnight movie you see at your movie theater, this is the video game version of it. And that's exactly what we need for Halloween. We need floating brains on jetpacks with cyborg samurai ninjas trying to kill you while skeletons and zombies back them up. Death Crimson Ox is like no other game to ever exist in both good ways and bad ways. And that is why I'm telling you this Halloween season, load it up on Dreamcast, load it up on Naomi. However you play it, you got to do it because who couldn't love a face like this? I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.